Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Now, in an earlier video, to which I'll put a link in the description below, I bloke explained with the help of my really rather lovely Hamley Sport Pistol why a three round group isn't. Now, it appears that I caused some confusion because I had interposed myself and the Sport Pistol into the equation rather than just clamping the Sport Pistol. Apparently, this was going to make a huge difference to the point. Now, as we all know, the official sport of the intertubes is missing the point entirely, and a lot of people have a lot of practice at this. So I got accused of cherry picking, of uh, not shooting well, whatever. Now the resulting group is this, and it will look suspiciously like some things you're going to see in a while, for which no guns were involved at all, let alone me. Now the reason why I shot it was to spread the shots out a bit so that we could see how no three shots, whether consecutive or not, are likely to be representative of the whole group. Now, for all avoidance of doubt, we're just going to take the guns out of the equation. Sorry. That's the last you'll see of one today. And we're going to do it death by Excel sheet style. Now to understand this properly we need a bit of A-level maths and for the non-Brits in the audience that means high school maths, abitur for the Germans, because it needs concepts such as standard deviation, a normal distribution and uniform distribution and some understanding of statistics. Now uh, if you're a bit rusty on your uh, normal distribution and your uniform distribution, I suggest you pause the video, go take five minutes, read Wikipedia, I'll still be here. Right, so before we begin, there's a few statistical concepts that we need to uh, get sorted. First of all, and this is quite counterintuitive, but Statistically, everything else being equal, each shot is an independent event, like flipping a coin. If you want to do a flipped coin three-shot group, it doesn't matter if it's three consecutive flips or if you do ten and then randomly pick three. It, the maths is blind to this. It really doesn't matter. Now, everyone always shoots strings and there's always a human element, there's weather, there's all sorts of other things going on in there. Um, so we tend to think of things as, uh, as sequential events and linked, but statistically they're not. The statistical variation in a firearm uh, and ammunition combination, provided there's nothing wrong with the firearm that's not biasing it to shoot in one particular direction or not, or to start stringing vertically as it heats up, uh, they're independent events. I'm, already, I'm sure that people are already tapping away, angry comments, missing the point. Wait until we've gone through this and then you'll see why. Secondly, we've got to model what's going on. And uh, the easiest way to do this is in polar coordinates. So we describe each shot as having uh, a distance and an angle from the center. Now, modeling the angle is easy. We just assume a uniform distribution. That's, that is to say that no angle is favored above any others, that, that, that any angle is equally likely. Now for the radius, what we do is we model it as a normal distribution, which looks roughly like that, it's the famous bell curve, centered on the center of the group. Now, the parameter we need to define this is the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is defined as the point in at which about 68% of the values will fall. So uh, if we take a standard deviation of three, for instance, 68% um, of the events are likely to fall within three units of the center. Now, we're not gonna talk about minutes of angle or millimeters or whatever, we're just gonna normalize this because this scales infinitely. It doesn't matter whether you've got some hyper-accurate laser thing that would have a standard, dist a standard deviation of three micrometers or three millimeters or whatever, or it's, a, um, it's a, an old military bolt 
bolt action rifle and it's got three inches of standard deviation or whatever and ten inches of extreme spread it doesn't matter and that's the point that was missed with uh, the fact that 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 um, I shot the pistol free-handed uh, rather than clamping it all that would have happened really is that that would have been tighter and okay some of the flies that were due to me wouldn't be there but that's that's irrelevant to the general point so uh, let's go over to the webcam and uh, see what happens okay so what we've done here is we've uh, done some death by excel sheet we've uh, defined a random number generator that generates shots with a normally distributed uh, radius from the center standard deviation of three as I mentioned earlier and evenly angularly distributed now I've then converted that into Cartesian coordinates giving us XY values and then we can plot that and then by forcing the uh, sheet to refresh we can generate all sorts of 100 round groups with exactly the same statistical basis generated by exactly the same model now what I find very interesting is two things it's a that the human mind has great difficulty in dealing with randomness and the second thing is that um, we're very good at deluding ourselves with seeing patterns where we're not so for instance here we've got a cluster right around the middle and then uh, some over that side some 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 flies in fact this distribution looks almost sort of rhomboid shaped or possibly biased a bit low and uh, you might have noticed with the uh, group I shot before that they were biased in one particular direction which might have been me don't know um, if I generate a few more this one appears to be biased high right and then again all that one seems to be tighter generally but with uh, with a flyer some more sometimes you see random patterns like here we've got a little diagonal uh, diagonal stripe this one uh, we've got some statistical clustering here uh, where we've got sort of groups together but off the statistical mean because the, stati the statistical mean here is zero we know this because we programmed it to be zero it can't be anything else but then we get clusters like that because our mind is designed to identify them to pick them out um, let's just see if we can get some other interesting shapes with the randomness here okay here's another ni nice tight cluster of, uh, uh, of three shots over here so what I then did was I took uh, three of these sets and put it together to make a 300 round set which I then divided up into 100 individual uh, three round groups which were all totally independent no crossover between them so the first three round group here is uh, the first three shots these three whoops that's not three these three the second one is these three and so on now in principle I didn't have to do this I could have had them overlapping like that but that would raise the inevitable questions um, so I didn't all I, what I did was I, I made them independent now what we can do here is we can look at each three round group and see how representative they are of, of the whole now this one the answer is not at all the main point of impact here is around minus three down and probably about one right and if I move that down it's quite tricky there we go we got another one here tighter group but the mean point of impact is over here now if you were using this to adjust your scope you'd say ah three round groups mean point of impact right I'm uh, sort of say two left and two down so I'm gonna move up two up two right so that my I'm centered and then I fire my next three shots uh, where are we there we are fire my next three shots which would have gone here but actually they're further up and right now because I've adjusted and that's how you end up chasing shots and I grew up shooting target rifle where we had two sighters uh, and you really had to know what your rifle was doing and you really had to get to grips with um, uh, with flyers as your sighters the clustered flyers as your sighters sometimes you put your first two shots down and they'd be way out but together and you think 
Ooh, but last time I shot, it really was on this setting at this distance. So do I adjust? Do I split the difference? What do I do? And sometimes you, you, you just got to make an executive decision and you move it or you don't. And then you sort of suck it and see and where it goes. And what can sometimes happen is you get one of these statistical clusters of two shots down so low left and you adjust. You think, yeah, they felt like good shots. Yeah, OK, I'll make the full adjustment. And then your next shot goes high right. And that happened quite a lot. And that was with basically two round rigs. This was this was hard work. When everything went right, it was no problem. But when things went wrong, they went horribly wrong. So uh, just for interest, I'll show a couple more of these three round groups. And n very few of them have a mean point of impact that's bang on, bang on zero zero. And you see every now and again the odd flyer. See that one's a bit wide again, but the mean point of impact's not far off. A couple more. And another, another one for good measure. Now, again, low left. So what I did actually, to illustrate this point, is I plotted the mean point of impact for each of these uh, 100 unique groups. And you can see of these 100, how many of them are exactly on zero, zero? Well, none, none at all. Uh, there's a there's a few that are around there. There's some that are way off, and this one's three and a half up and almost one right. We've got one and a half right, and three and a half down. Uh, there's a couple that are clustered over here. The vast majority of them are within a uh, within the uh, the squares representing plus minus one unit in each direction. Now to reiterate the point. If I were to adjust on that basis and the next one was one from over here, it would go miles out, absolutely miles out. And um, it's just something you have to accept. Now, the more shots you put into the group, the tighter this mean point of impact distribution will get. It will, it will tend towards the middle as we increase the number of shots. And you can see from just eyeballing these, that one's more or less in the middle for the 100 rounds. With 100 rounds, they're pretty much normally on. Almost certainly pretty much bang in the middle. Now, so if you've made it this far, you survived death by Excel sheet, you probably need a drink, I know I do. So I hope that helps to explain the point. Take home messages. Three round groups aren't. Any particular three round group Sequential rounds or cherry picking has exactly the same probability as any other. More rounds, more chance that the group is actually vaguely representative or at least centred where you want it to be. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, like our Facebook page, and I hope to see you again in an Excel sheet sometime. Bye. Five minutes and there's sport pistol all over the dining room table. Ha! Huh.